Hey everyone, welcome back to the Virtual Boat Show. I'm joined by my colleague, Jeff Moser, the Editor-in-Chief of Trade Only. Jeff, what's going on? Hey Dan, how you doing? Just, just hanging in quarantine, just like you. Yeah, yeah, missing missing the docks, that's that's for sure. But uh, yeah. Yeah, the next best thing to, to hit the show with you is, is getting, to, getting to talk about boats. And I think we, we picked an exciting one for, for today's episode. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I know we both are pretty familiar with the prestige lineup and it was actually when we were at con God it feels like what 30 years ago that we got a little bit of a sneak peek of the prestige X line and I know you got to talk to Nick Harvey a little bit about some some updates and, and catching up with with this exciting new boat I mean they were really excited about it when I talked to them earlier in the week con there was just a silhouette. I had asked them, like, can we get, have some renderings and things like that for our virtual boat show? And they sent over a big file in Dropbox, and I started to look at them, and it really revealed a lot about this boat's design and its complete departure than anything we've seen from Prestige. And we've both been to seeing shore events where every boat they've built, the complete model line is there, and this boat looks nothing like any of those boats. Right, and that's... That's maybe the most surprising thing about this boat, you know, that we were talking about is, you know, it's the 30 year anniversary. And, and if you look at their boats from from beginning to today, it's, it's really always seemed like very careful, you know, steps and progression. Each year, the models just continue to evolve, but they really had very similar DNA. Then this thing comes out and it's like, wow, this this is different. This is going to be pretty big. Yeah. From bow to stern, it's a, it's a completely different than anything I've seen them do before. And um, starting at the stern, they have a, a fairly decent-sized fold-down beach club and access to the cockpit from both sides. And then that cockpit, they're calling it the Infinity Cockpit, is yeah. what Eric Stromberg told me. And I can see from the renderings what he means by that. It, it's one level, first of all, from the salon into the cockpit. And it just the space is just... It's just gigantic. There's a table which can be removed with a sun pad and with the settee. There's got to be seating for a dozen people there. At least. And it really is going to have those infinity views. They got rid of the side deck. So it looks like the volume in that in the salon is, is really pretty wild. And then you can go all the way forward almost to the helm and look back and see the water. That's, uh, that's going to be a cool touch. Yeah. Just do access the... Um, equally large flybridge and you have two points of access from both forward and back. I'd be hard pressed to find a boat that has a design like this. I've been racking my brain and I've come up with nothing. Now it's uh yeah, it's same here, really interesting design and choice, but as I look at these renderings and, and I try to imagine, you know, a bunch of people on this boat, I mean, that's going to be one of the most popular spots to hang out. Definitely the best views in the house. And I imagine if you have like eight, nine, ten people up there and you're at anchor, you're starting to entertain and you got snacks coming up and down. If you have that many people, it really does become kind of a bottleneck at, on the one staircase. You almost are climbing onto each other. So to have four different access points, you know, like I said, two from the cockpit and then two forward, it seems like they paid a lot of attention to how people flow in and out of these spaces. Oh, yeah, I'd agree with you that. And. Another thing they paid attention to was just the, I mean, you look at this nice gentle angle from the cockpit to the flybridge, a big beefy handrail. I mean, you got people of all ages running up and down those steps. You want to make sure it's safe. And it's like very, it's a very elegant uh, stairwell. It's sort of like the, you know, the, the space steps on a, on a pole, but it still looks really safe. It doesn't ruin the view of this solid stairs case, but yet it had with the handrail and things like that, it, it still does the job, you know? Uh, absolutely. So another another point that, that jumped out at me, you talk about social spaces, I think a lot, an area where a lot of people are naturally going to congregate is around the galley. And certainly seems like the biggest, most substantial galley I, I've ever seen on the Prestige. You know, looking at the renderings, it's a real central spot for this boat. But I'm told it comes in, in two different options, kind of what I would expect in the American style is, is big and wide open, but for your, the European and Asian market, you'd also get that galley more enclosed if you prefer cooking in private. So it'd be, it'd be interesting to see which one's more popular. Yeah, I mean, having those full-size appliances, lots of storage, I mean, you can be cruising for a week and not have to stop and restock, which is a really good thing to have. 
And it's like you said, on one level, and then a few steps up, you're at the helm. Mm -hmm. Space, I really liked looking at the renderings and looking at some of the short video of Eric Stromberg. He was on a full-size mock-up. I'm a sucker for a reverse rake windshield. It has that, just looks like a really good space. Uh, it appears to have really very good sight lines all, all around, at least 180 degrees around and aft. Um, and there's also, to starboard, there's access to the four deck and then if you want to go back to the flybridge as well so it's just another way of sort of getting around on the boat that's a good point and jeff let me ask you kind of in your in your conversation with nick did you guys get into when we might ex expect to see the real time this boat is in build well along its way and they're expected to uh splash in june and do some sea trials of the boat it's a couple of engine options this one's going to have the largest volvo penta 1350s at a thousand horsepower you can also get the um, 1,200 to 900 horsepower a piece. So they're going to run some sea trials all through June with the hopes of having this boat at Con in late September. And then we will see it stateside at Lauderdale. Wow. Awesome. Well, uh, definitely, definitely look forward to, to that. And Jeff, you know, the, the big question that comes to mind is you know, we had so much fun on the, uh, on the 460 last summer. It was uh, great to spend time with the team. I think the only way to one up that is if you get a hold of Nick later, uh, let him know the Paramore Yacht crew is looking for an upgrade. We'll we'll trade in the 460 for the 70 any day. <laughs> I'm ready to spend summer on the med on that boat. It'd be a great way to uh, sort of break this um, social distancing that we've all been experiencing throughout the world. Jeff, well, you know, I I know you've you've taken over the helm with the sister publication, uh, doing a great job with reporting at Trade Only, but it's it's always fun to catch up and and talk both. So yeah, still, you know, I'm reporting on you know the B2B side's got me reporting on the news and, and and trends and things like that, but I'm still my obsession is strong about all things boats, and I'll see you here again very soon. I'm sure doing the same thing. I'll be hitting you up to talk about another one. That, that sounds like a plan. I'm going to hold you to it. So, all right, take it easy, Jeff. Thanks for joining the show. All right, we'll talk soon. Talk to you later. Bye now. Bye.